everyone. Welcome to Viperplex Outdoors. I'm your host, Daniel Vanikerkov, and my guest today is Mark Bramberger. Now, Mark, I gotta ask you, where are we? Oh, we're just off Forestry Farm Road, uh, just outside of a town called Lindock. Okay. Um, it's a popular trout fishing spot. Yesterday was the first day, and what I want to do is basically show you that uh, wild edibles isn't always something that needs to be like roughing it or I want to show you that there is a delicacy too uh, to cooking out in the wild. The plan is to try to catch a trout. Try to catch, okay. Well, <laughs> you know how a trout can be. Right. And on top of that, we need to forage for what's available in our area right here today. Okay, so we're going to go out and gather some wild edibles. <laughs> this part I love. I love foraging, but I'm not too confident on what I'm foraging for. That's takes, why this guy's here. It takes a lot of practice and it takes a, a long time. to. It's one of the hardest things I've ever done. I can relate to uh, that. There's, yes. there's so many variables, what parts of the plant you can eat, what time of the year they're ready, um, whether you can eat the root, the, whether you have to cook it before you you can eat it. Right. There's okay. so many variables to, to eating. Because you don't want to just grab something to eat it, right? Like, no. You even don't. if, yeah, <laughs> no thanks. <There's laughs> a, there is a long process right. that involves sampling. But it, it takes hours and hours and you've got hours know, right? per like, plant. Um, you can snap a photo if you're out in the woods and you don't have books or uh, like I do. You can go out with your with your book as well. Uh, they're usually organized by flower color. So you can go out, you can say, hey, there's a yellow flower. You can try to find it in your book, see if anything about it is, is edible. Okay. And that's how I started. I used a shovel for the longest time, right. uh, especially for digging up roots and, and whatnot. But... Uh, I just recently found out by watching another video that somebody had had uh, what's called a hore hore knife. And now it looks like a really big badass Rambo knife. <laughs> but it is actually, you can see, is a shovel. It has a, some little wear on it already, but it is solid. And I've had issues in the past where I go to pry down on my spade, and if it's a metal uh, spade, it tends to bend. If it's plastic, I've snapped the handles off, and then I'm left with nothing but the, sh the spade end. This solid shank through here, well riveted, solid grip, heavy duty blade. That is going to do nothing but what you want it to do. It looks like a knife. It feels like a knife. Smells like a knife, <laughs> but it's not a knife. Hori hori. The edge is not even sharp. Like no. just a shovel, isn't it? Just a, just a spade. Yeah. That's Absolutely. awesome. That is and awesome. It comes with a knife sheath. Comes with a sheath. This here was purchased about a month ago on Amazon for about under $20. Under 20 bucks for the Hori Hori Easy. knife. Okay, Mark, let's put your Hori Hori knife to work and go and find us some lunch. All right. Because really, we didn't bring anything today and I'm counting on you to feed me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go, bud. Pressure's okay. This is the picture of this app. You see you have options. You can take a photo. You can actually create wallpapers of the things that you found. And you can also uh, tell a friend. We're gonna just take a photo you just set the item that you want to take a picture of set your focus make sure it's inside that zone take a quick picture it's working below and here it is I come up with trout lilies came up right with there. trout lily right there so there's white trout lily dimpled trout lily then you can pick which one that it most looks like and there you go I wasn't even aware that there was two other trout lilies Besides the white trout lily, which is the one that I'm very familiar with. So you can learn even more than uh, just by using this app. Excellent. Now, does that app tell you, like, if it's medicinal, if it's uh, edible? There's a more details. Do they details. tell you what to eat about it, like the leaves or the... There is a more details, and you click on more details. It gives you more information okay. on that. Okay, that's awesome. Now, what is the name of this app? That, again, was, it's called Picture This. Picture This. Okay. Right. Awesome. Good Perfect. to know. Well, let's go picture this stuff yeah. and we'll see what we're going to be see eating. See what else we can find. Here. This is trout lily. Easily identifiable. Spade shaped leaf. Single leaflet. And has a red stem. And these patchy, patchy uh, patterns on them. The uh, root, which is the edible part, is deep, deep inside the ground. And that's where this comes Bulb, in. Which is the actual part. is usually fairly straight down so you only want need to be about an inch away from it and this, the hori hori blade uh, has a, a rigid saw end so it's easy to go down and then just kind of saw your way around it 
and that breaks up the roots that might be in the way. And then you can just pluck, pluck that out. Look at that. And then you just break it apart until you follow this white strand here, and there is your edible bit. The, the, the root is a long way down from the surface. You can see that. And that's where it pays to have a long, sturdy blade, especially if you were gonna pry up with a, with a lesser shovel. That, that would cause some damage, more than likely, or wouldn't last long. Okay, so that's our edible part, that's right? That's our edible part. This little bulb here. And there's a brown paper, you take that off and clean it up. Okay. And so, that, that tastes a lot like a water chestnut. Water, nice. So are we gonna be adding these today to our meal or? Maybe do a salad. To a, sa oh, we're yeah, gonna maybe a do salad. Yeah, maybe do a salad. We're gonna have a salad. I'm intrigued. Okay, so like, this is really small. Absolutely. Okay, but if you look at how many there is, it's littered. The whole area is littered. Absolutely. You can see like they're everywhere. Hundreds just right awesome. around us. So we're going to gather up a few of these and uh, take it back with us. Make it our salad. I thought maybe you could uh, just pull these out of the ground, but you can't. Because as soon as you do that, the root just lets go, or the stem lets go. You lose the, the whole point of it. Yeah, oh yeah. You actually have to dig them out. You can't pull them out. They're way down and they're very tender. Yeah, very, very week getting a few there takes time that's for sure but you know doing a pinch oh yeah for sure you know or even just for something to do if you're bored such a beautiful day today there's a there's a what do they call it kind of bike racing that is uh, I don't enduro. know. They're all yeah. They're all enduros. Yeah, it's an enduro race going on today. It's awesome. You can hear them going down the road. Perfect day for it. So, not even five feet from where we were standing, there's uh, what we have: uh, wild leeks and ramps. And these ones are getting quite large. Uh, this is just a small patch. I prefer to pull from the, the larger bundles, but today I'll probably just take a couple from here, and then I'll move out. And there are several large, large patches in this area where we can pull these up. But I'll dig one up here for you to show you. And these are called leeks or wild ramps. And they taste a lot like an onion. Quick way to identify them is they have the red stem. They'll be not very far on the ground two leaflets that turn green, long spade shape. And then when you pull back this, you see that skin, not very pleasant, that part, but there's a really incredible wild leak or wild ramp right under there. And that is incredibly delicious. Wow, look at that, wild leak. You can smell it too. Oh my, that's total onion. It's delicious. So I can just eat this? You don't have to cook this? Oh, you can just bite you right into You just eat that. this? Yeah, you can eat that raw. Oh, total. Yeah. total. Oh my gosh. Delicious, a lot of... It even has the heat to it. Yeah, a oh little yeah. bit. It tastes just like an onion. Very delicate, very, very delicious. That is really nice. That's gonna make amazing for a I've salad. Ha I've had these jarred and canned too. They were delicious. You jarred and pickled them? Yeah. Maybe you should add that uh, recipe. Yeah, I haven't done it myself, <laughs> but I've had them. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, so we're going to gather theory. up a bunch of these leeks. And, um, oh, wow, that is very oniony. Don't talk to me. <laughs> when you're looking for fiddleheads, what you do is you look for the old stands of the ostrich fern that were from last year. And what you'll see is down at the bottom here is the beginnings of some new ones. These ones are a little bit early yet. And these ones here are more further along in what you're looking for. But you see they have a papery coating that's coming up. They're hairless, first of all, and this is how you identify it. You get this papery coating that comes off. You have no hairs, no furs, like some other ferns do, and other that, that look a lot like this. And you'll have this groove down the center. And that's a great example of, of how to identify, three ways to identify the ostrich fern and your fiddleheads, your edible fiddleheads. 
stand for a good example. Six to eight inches, they're still good to eat. So, I don't know about, this one here might not be one that you'd want to choose to eat, but definitely these ones down here, this one may be getting close, but you can still, you can still harvest these. And you still, and they're still tender, they're still good. Uh, they start to build up a toxin when they start to get a little bit larger. So you don't want to harvest anything, anything uh, over eight inches for sure. Okay, when you're harvesting, uh, be sure to, and be responsible when you're harvesting, to not harvest the entire stand. If you can, just pick two, three, definitely leave at least half of the fiddlehead standing, and that way the plant can live and survive, and you can come back and harvest it next year. Nice. So I'm just gonna put that on there. There. And that is my trout rig. I've had great success with this in the past, and I don't plan that it'll be any different. I like to use the bear hook technique, because trout don't bite anyway. So this works just as well as anything else, really. I just take a nice light cast, try to get it near some uh, obstructions that they like to hang around, and no time, we should have a bite. Dad, did you see that? We just got a hit. Oh, it's a good one. Oh, definitely a nice eating size. Oh. Oh, there we go. Works every time. I tell you, that rig has never failed me. Dan, have you ever seen a rainbow trout? Like this before, pre-gutted and everything. Uh, at the market, that's unbelievable. You caught that fish off a bear hook. Bear hook. With a big sinker on it. Yeah. A swivel just stuck on the hook. Yep. And the fish is already gutted. And it's already gutted. It's already gutted and cleaned. That, that is the most convenient rainbow trout I have ever caught in my life. Wow. Unbelievable. <laughs> what, we caught <laughs> really? what we've done is we've got a nice fire started and we're going to build a pit. We're going to have to dig a pit and I'm going to use my hori hori knife to dig down. We'll get quite a large pit. Uh, our fish is, is, is a decent size as you've seen and we're going to just dig a hole, dig it fairly deep. We're going to slide the ashes in. We're going to have our fish all prepped and ready to go and we're going to bury it, cover it all back up with dirt and we're going to come back in about a half hour, 45 minutes and check up on it. Okay, so what we're going to do is uh, we've actually lined the hole because what you don't want is that this roots down in here and a lot of people don't realize that those roots, if they uh, start to burn in an ember, they can actually carry on underground and uh, cut, spring up somewhere else and cause forest fires. So we've lined this here with a tin foil so that we don't get a direct ember on those, that area. What we're gonna do is roll off these logs and then take all those fine pieces of charcoal. We're gonna roll it into here, uh, just probably slide it in with a stick and then we'll put our fish on top and bury it all up and uh, we'll check on it in okay. about a half an hour. All right, so now for the good times. Yeah, so now all we have to do is we get some of the stuff that we found uh, prepped and ready to go. We have some wild leeks out here and we're gonna wash them up. We got a pot of water to do that in. Okay. Uh, we got some tin foil and we got our uh, freshly caught fish. <laughs> and then uh, I'm gonna, what I did, I also brought some butter from home. Oh, absolutely. And I'm gonna lay that inside. We're going to stuff the leeks inside with the butter. So I'm just going to cut this. You got Probably some nice butter bit. there. Some nice butter. Everybody loves butter. Heck yeah. Almost as much as everybody loves bacon. Mm. Bacon. Some my knife here. Okay, so you're just going to cut that like cheese? I'm just going to cut that like cheese and I stuff that right in here. Nice. Cut off another one. Just kind of set her in there. Here, see what's going on. Oh, yeah, yep. Yeah. Cut off another one. This is healthy, too, by the way. Super healthy. Yes, butter is healthy. <laughs> they say you get dairy in your diet. Actually, they just removed that from the Did Canadian they? Health Guide. Did they? Why would they do that? Because is it bad for you? Is dairy bad for you? Because I like it. Oh, well, I'm just going to do this. 
don't think we're going to need a ton of them. No, it looks like we got it quite a bit. We got a whole pile over there. <laughs> we got to save some for our fiddleheads as well. That's right. So I'm just going to take a group of these. Cut them out. All right. It's not critical that we uh, make them look beautiful because it's all coming out. This is just for flavor. So we're going to take this. We're going to wrap, put it all in here. Just pack it right in. And then we'll wrap this baby up. Wow, look at that. I really don't want dirt in my No, head. I'm not feeling dirt. Wrap that all up. And what you want to do, make sure that your final wrap cups everything in so that everything doesn't flow out. Whew, there's That's definitely a lot of heat coming off this. Wow. So, should we have brought a shovel? This would have been a lot easier with a shovel. Yeah. Okay. Right Don't right. want to get anything under. Would have yeah. been a lot easier with a shovel. <laughs> All right. You go for it. It is warm. <laughs> well, I think that Ooh. will probably be enough. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, okay, that's good. All right, let's, let's dig this stuff out of here. Yeah, okay, yeah. let's just pick that out, get that away from the edge. You take the greens, you have your camera to compress it down a bit. What we'll do is wrap this up. Ooh, that's hot. All right, and then the part that Hopefully there's no leaks. <laughs> and that tin foil that we put down initially should probably help keep that moisture from putting out our coals too and getting that heat and dissipating it too quickly. So hopefully those coals will last longer and cook longer uh, with, with that in place and the moisture won't wick away all the heat that we have. Okay, so we're just going to leave that in the ground yeah, yeah. and we cook for what, half an hour? Uh, yeah, I uh, know for an oven, it is about 15 minutes for every inch thick. Okay. So if you have a three inch thick trout, then you're looking at 45 minutes in the oven. Okay. But this is going to be quite a bit hotter and you know, you never do want to overcook your fish either. So I'm going to try in a half an hour. It seems about two inches thick. It's going to be an intense heat. So I'm thinking oh, a half hot. hour is going to be more than enough for this. Um, okay. This is a, a, a Kalu, I guess in, in uh, right. The Hawaiian, the Hawaiian Hawaiian Kalu style, um, also known as a lazy man's oven here in North America. Awesome. We got the nicely cleaned uh, ostrich ferns. Uh, we have oh, our Sorry. butter from home. The beef? Yep. Dan's uh, slightly nibbled beef ox I <laughs> used <you>. it already. <laughs> and we have some of our leeks here that we're going to chop up and add to this, and it should be delicious. Okay. All right. So we got our pieces of oxo cube in there, or beef bouillon cube. Probably just need a little butter, maybe a little more mm, <laughs> later. Butter is good. And then uh, we'll prep these, we'll chop the ends off these here, and we'll put them in there, and it should be good to go. Oh, the leek just has that amazing onion smell. It does. One of my favorite things to eat here. Together a little mini salad while we're waiting for the fish to cook. You want me to make the salad? No, do you want to? Yeah, we can do that. I didn't realize you were filming. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, let's get her started. I wonder what your nibbled on uh, uh, beef bouillon cube is going to look like when it starts to melt. We've got our uh, skillet on there. We're going to be frying up some fiddleheads. And some, it already smells good. Oh, it's got butter and some uh, beef oxo in there. And, wow. Ooh, is it warm? Yeah. yeah oh, yeah. It's oh, warm. it's hot. And it's warm. That is nice. Yeah. There we go. Hope everything's okay. Ooh. Oh, don't want to tear through that. You got to dig it out just a bit more. Make 
need to open. Ooh, got some charcoals on my knuckles there. <laughs> Is it hot? <laughs> okay, I'm just trying to figure out what we're getting a hold of here. I think this is, this is your the side. fish. This is the fish right here. Okay. There's the side. There's the fish. Alright, let's get this. Oh, that's hot. <laughs> Alright. Oh, he's got his tools. I got my he's tools he's got his work tools here. You can hear up the uh, fillet heads there, just sizzling and frying. Alright. Oh. There's, there's our wow. fish. There's just, the maybe fish. Maybe if we roll it over and get some of that dirt off of there. Oh, there we yeah. go. There we go. Awesome. Look inside here. Mm. You can feel the heat still in there. Feel that. Wow. Oh, yeah. Some nice warmth out here. Oh, you Now, my hands, are, my hands are dirty, Dan. How oh, are yours? Well, I got to wash my hands. Right. Quite this the spray. The <laughs> it's going to be delicious. It smells good. That fish smells amazing it once does. we dug it up. Wow. And opened up that first layer. As soon as you opened it, the, the aroma just came right just out. Just filled right the butter, the leeks, and, and, and the you smell know, of that beautiful fish. Well, it's starting to cool down now, but the fish is warm. Yep. It's still got that nice heat radiating on it. But yeah, let's eat, dude. Let's plate her up. Awesome. Rip off some of this fish. Oh. Yeah, put that Ooh, big Ooh, side so up. There, hold it. Lots of bones, but it's fish. Go ahead, bud. All right. I'm not too fan about the fish skin. You like that? No. Do you, do you, no. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, so. though. There we go. I'll plate me up here. Nice. Here. Just flip that over. Look at the color in that. There you go. There we go. Okay. And I'll get you some fiddleheads here, Dan. You gonna get rid of the skin? <laughs> All right. Maybe. Give me some fiddleheads. Give me a quick second. Let's see if that works. It helps. Does that handle still quite hot? Oh, you want to hold your plate there? Yeah. All right, let's put some of those on there. Put those on there. Ooh! <laughs> wow! I'll put mine down here. Wow, check this out. Look at that. Fish, leek, and fiddlehead. This one's mine. Do I have a fork? Oh, I do. Mmm. Yeah? Oh, dang. Yeah. Uh, That's some good stuff. Wow. Still a crisp to those fiddleheads, too. Mm -hmm. That's nice. Let's try this. <laughs> what do you got? You got a salad? What do they call that when you have the condiments? Oh, not condiments. Mm -hmm. uh... Yeah. Wow. Dude, the fish is... Well cooked. Let me try it's it. flavorful. Wow. Mm. Mm, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Lots of nice flavor to that. Wow. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, that is delicious. Oh. I'm really enjoying this. Go for the perfect bite. You're using a little bit of everything. Yeah, let's do that. Get some leek in there. Get some fiddlehead in there. Some wild trout mm. in here. Oh yeah, that's what we're talking about. Gotta sit down. Well, well, Mark. All I gotta say is that meal was amazing. It was so good and so satisfying. I wish, honestly, I wish there was more. Those mm. fiddleheads. Oh. Uh, <laughs> next time we should have grabbed more of those fiddleheads. Absolutely. Sure. Those. They went down perfect. That fish was was a. Cooked so perfectly. Tender. Perfectly, yeah, absolutely. It fell right off. Fell right off the bone. The skin wasn't burnt. It was it's still nicely steamed amazing. inside. Now, how long did it take to cook that fish in that hole? Well, it took about a half an hour, a little bit extra. We found. Uh, okay. So yeah, just uh, around about forty yeah. minutes. Yeah, about, about 40, forty minutes. Let's say forty yeah. minutes to make it. Yeah, awesome. So, Mark, well, thank you very much for bringing me out here and no problem. cooking me this. Yeah. Bushman's meal. Yeah, Bushman's meals don't have to be He's just surviving. They don't have to no, be. No, they don't have to be eating worms garbage, out of the ground. Yeah, but exactly. yeah, absolutely. It's, it's, it's better than that. Well, that's perfect. Well, thank you so much, Mark. And uh, till next time, we're going to be cooking and eating. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for joining us. And uh, well, until next time, be good to one another. See you later. See ya.